And if we're willing to make a change today, the impact on our lives in the long run will be huge. So in summary, be fearful of your current path, more fearful than you are of taking the leap into something new. Day podcast radio show with Bruce Hilliard today and every day, reaching out for innovative ideas in every way. Today's show is brought to you by your future. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. Welcome to you and a big welcome to our guest, Mike Michalowicz. He's host of the Profit First podcast and author of four books. He's a well-qualified advisor of small business startups and common sense bookkeeping strategies. We'll hear a few stories from Mike and he'll talk a little bit about his books and ideas, followed by some amazing three chord songs. Stay tuned. Mike Michalowicz, welcome to the show. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Bruce. You're very welcome. I want to talk about, this is interesting, your third million dollar venture. What's the story on all of that? Oh, so, well, I run it today. Uh, it is called Profit First Professionals, and it's a membership organization of accountants and bookkeepers. There's 170 members, and they are using Profit First to guide their clients to profitability. And so the name of your uh, podcast is the Profit First Podcast. I listened to some of that. It's very entertaining. You're a humorous, oh, you. a humorous kind of guy. I like that. It's a little bit like the morning zoo radio station. <laughs> well, I, I got to kick out of it. Uh, talk about your books a little bit. Uh, one of them has a very interesting title. It was the first one you wrote, The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. Now, a lot of paper's been used for toilet paper, but I don't know if it's ever been used in a book title before. Tell us about that one. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I intentionally did that. I mean, I wanted a title that stands out and is unique um, and was a little edgy. But the, the concept is that in business, many times we catch ourselves scant on resources. We don't have enough money or contacts or education or experience. And too many people fail to launch because they think those lack of resources is working against them. And what I explain in The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur, it's in fact the lack of resources that's your biggest advantage because it forces innovation. It, it ties back to toilet paper, the picture of the cover is when there's three sheets there, like no one gives up, we find a way. And that's how business is. We will find ourselves without resources that we think we need, and it's that lack of resources that will bring about innovation. Have you ever heard this? It, it's, it's kind of on the same track. It deals with toilet paper. The roll of toilet paper is like uh, life. The closer you get to the end, the faster it goes. <laughs> you haven't heard that? I've, I I have not. That's a good one. It, I, I, I believe it to be true. I, I'm surprised. It's sort of the same concept. It's, that's crazy. That's interesting. You said your, your mother did the envelope system. That's yeah, I about. wrote about that in my most recent book, which is called Profit First. And what I did in that book and what my mother taught me was exactly that, the envelope system, where we pre-allocate money to its intended purpose. So literally, she, she worked at a factory down the road. When she would cash in her check, she'd put a portion in the food envelope, a portion in the rent envelope, a portion in the give back to the community envelope. And then when she went food shopping, she'd always work with the food envelope. So in Profit First, I teach the same method for business. It is the ultimate most simplistic but effective cash management system. So I teach businesses, as money comes into your business, immediately allocate a predetermined percentage toward profit. That's one of the envelopes. Toward paying the owners their salary. That's another envelope. Your employees their salary. And you can divide up multiple envelopes. I found typically there's at least five we should have. Businesses could have even more envelopes than just that. The Pumpkin Plan, one of your books. Talk about yeah. that. So uh, the pumpkin plan, uh, there's a lot of parallels I've run in my books um, to life experiences. So in the pumpkin plan, I, by a unique confluence of events, discovered pumpkin farmers and not the ordinary pumpkin farmers, but these colossal pumpkin farmers and found that they use 
the same methods as the ordinary pumpkin farmer, but with only slight modification. And as a result, the pumpkin responds with explosive growth. Well, when I discovered this, I thought maybe the same exists in business. And sure enough, businesses that have extraordinary growth and success, I found inevitably are doing a few things differently. Ironically, it's not a lot of stuff different that's different. And that's what I thought I would see. But instead, it's just a few different things. And by doing these few things differently, the business organically organically and healthily explodes in growth. So that's why I teach in that book. Surge. Surge um, was about catching market momentum. You know, we, we spend make so much effort to market ourselves and we follow whatever's the, the raise the rave of today like uh, Facebook ads if you're not on Facebook you're crazy you got to be running ads on Facebook but that is likely a short-lived fad it may go for a few years but there'll be another platform another way to advertise and people will rush there but I found what the ultimate advertising mechanism is when your customers you know word of mouth are talking about you to the point where you become the default incumbent choice, meaning if you can get enough people talking about you enough, you, you'll just catch the momentum of the market because it'll be in top of mind for every everyone in that market. So Surge talks about how do you get in front of the market itself, the wave of the market, the movement of the market, and become top of mind and therefore catch all the business as the market shifts or grows. And you seem to be doing that. <laughs> it's... Yeah. So it's funny. So every book I've written... Um, has been either a past challenge I faced and I'm trying to fix myself, basically, or it's an opportunity for myself and I'm, I'm learning and trying to figure out how to do it. And I feel compelled to document what I learn and share it with other entrepreneurs. So what I'm doing with my current business, Profit First Professionals, with accountants and bookkeepers, was this realization that accountants and bookkeepers are undergoing a massive shift accounting software is becoming so sophisticated that an accountant will no longer be needed in the near future, nor will a bookkeeper, at least in the traditional sense. But there's also an opportunity. If you're an accountant or bookkeeper, you're the numbers person. You have an opportunity to become truly consultative, to guide people to profitability, I think is one of the biggest opportunities, but to guide people. So I started my company with my business partner three years ago. We put it right in front of this movement in the accounting and bookkeeping space, and our business, um, knock on wood, has caught wonderful momentum. Support for Better Each Day comes from BruceHilliardHomes.com. For a better day in buying or selling a home, search BruceHilliardHomes.com or visit our website, Better Each Day, for more information. And while you're there, subscribe to the show. It's free. That's BruceHilliardHomes.com, Windermere Real Estate and make it better each day. You speak about uh, failures that you've had. And I think the number one reason people don't go into entrepreneurships uh, is because they're afraid of failing. They're just, it's just fear, period. Uh, Mm. Yeah, so failure can absolutely paralyze us. And... You know, I, I do talk a lot about that mindset. I think the, the biggest thing that we can do is to consider the failure of not doing. Um, if we can make it more fearful of staying put than it is to make a leap, we'll be more successful. And actually, I open up uh, one of the books, The Pumpkin Plan, I open up with a story of the old man in the rusty lawn chair. kind of touches back to what you're talking about. The, the second half of life goes faster than the first half. And as we near the end, it, it starts picking up momentum. So in the opening part of the book, I talk about the the elderly guy who's in the rusty lawn chair drinking half a glass of lemonade, <laughs> looking back at his life. And it's sadly mostly regret. I wish I could have. I wish I did this. I should have done that. And what brought him to that point was just repeating the pattern of doing what he's always done. You know, our growth, our change will only come about if, if we change. And what I wanted to do in the book was get people really thinking about the path they're on and how committed they are to staying stuck, uh, to staying and duplicating what they've always been doing. And if we're willing to make a change today, the impact on our lives in the long run will be huge. So in summary, be fearful of your current path, more fearful than you are of taking the leap into something new. 
you mentioned uh, this kind of topic came out of the, I don't know, sidebar. Are you feeding your business or your ego? Right now, I would argue, I hope, neither anymore. You know, I'm not speaking of you personally, Mike. Just people, uh, I think, get in, get caught up in that template somehow. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I think many of us, I'll, I'll talk from my own vantage point. You know, for me, it was ego in the beginning. I, I wanted to be rich and famous uh, among my colleagues in my community. Um, I was very ego driven. And in fact, my second company, I sold it to a fortune 500. And when I walked out with that big check in hand, I uh, started pounding my chest by getting the cars and the big house and just wasting money. Um, I subsequently lost all my money, by the way, which was the most painful experience of my life, but also what I'm most grateful for, because it got me out of the ego game and got me into building a business for purpose. So I think there's a third thing. Some people build it for ego. Uh, from my experience, that's a trap. Uh, others build business because they want to have a foundationally strong business and generate income. But I think the third thing is purpose. You know, mm -hmm. My business today, I, I do it what I do because I really want to serve others. And uh, I'm, l listen, I'm, I'm not a martyr here and saying, you know, I'm going to serve others and not have a, uh, a comfortable lifestyle. I want that too. But my lifestyle is a benefactor of serving purpose as opposed to uh, a primary objective. I want to serve others really well, so extraordinarily well that the money I generate uh, can support my lifestyle, but also can facilitate greater service. So I think purpose is really, really the essence of a successful business, at least for me. Absolutely. So what triggered your change of mindset? Was there an epiphany, uh, just a magic moment there? Or? Yeah, there was. I, I didn't know it was the magic moment in the moment, but there was. It, it was losing all my money, and it was the day I had to face it. So... I became a self-made millionaire in my early 30s. Ego exploded. I was just totally full of myself, thinking I knew everything. And I blew my money on stupid things like cars and the sabbatical. R rented a house out in Hawaii, and, and my family and I moved out there for a while. All these different things. And then I also became an angel investor and, and, and was stepped into a space I had no right to be in. I had no experience, no capability and started spending money on businesses that were failed from the get-go. It took me about a year and a half to two years, and I blew all the money that I had made in selling my businesses. I'd actually had sold two at this point. And, uh, but I hadn't told my family, and this was the epiphany. I, I had not told my family anything. I'd been lying by omission, and I actually didn't even emotionally accept it. Logically, I saw my money going away, but emotionally I thought that one more client would come one day and just it would turn everything around, and it didn't. I hit rock bottom. And uh, rock bottom was February 14th. I'll never forget it. Valentine's Day, 2008. My accountant said, Mike, you're out of money. And that's the day I had to come home to my family sobbing, uh, ashamed that uh, everything we, every possession we had was gone. We lost it all. I had lost it all. And <laughs> I even write about this in Profit First. My nine-year-old daughter at the time runs out of the room and runs back in with her piggy bank. And she puts it in front of me and says, Daddy, I'm going to support our family. And that was just a, uh, that's a moment that will go with me forever. I, I will never forget that moment. And that became the turning point. Not in the moment. Like in the moment, I was just devastated. I was proud of her, but just devastated and embarrassed and ashamed of myself. But as I reflected back upon that, as time moved forward, I realized that I needed to really understand how to run a business healthily. And that actually inspired me to become an author and start writing books originally to, to fix my own cause my own challenges and then subsequently to serve others that face the same challenges so on a happy note you play guitar i understand yeah i do i got two here in the office <laughs> what do you play um well rock like just anything that people can sing to i'm a three chord guy like you know that's I, all you need that's all i need <laughs> it was funny my, my father-in-law is a jazz musician and uh, there's a joke. They say, uh, what's the difference between a rock musician and a jazz musician? And he said, well, a rock musician can play three chords in front of a million people, and a jazz musician plays a million <laughs> chords in front of three people. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, and if he could get paid by the note, that would be good, too. Yeah. The, yeah the, oh my God. What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, you know, I, I do listen to everything. I mean, everything. I mean, jazz to folk to I, I, I personally prefer rock, but rock 
to country um, to classical. So when I walk in, I have a, one of those Amazon uh, music players. I'll come in and just set it to randomize, and I may be spending the day listening to jazz or to uh, Bach and Mozart or to you know Def Leppard. I don't know what's coming, but <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for very much for uh, speaking with us, and uh, I'll put uh, your books and your information on my show notes. I want to wish you the very best. You take care. I'm wishing you the best too, Bruce. Thanks for having me on your show. All right. Bye-bye. 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 Support for Better Each Day comes from BruceHilliardHomes.com. For a better day in buying or selling a home, search BruceHilliardHomes.com or visit our website, Better Each Day, for more information. And while you're there, subscribe to the show. It's free. That's BruceHilliardHomes.com, Windermere Real Estate. And make it better each day. Radio Show with Bruce Hilliard. We'll be back with a new horizon, but until then, honor the future. It comes with a lifetime guarantee.